How's it going, everybody? Tyler with Alamari.com. Today, we're back with episode four of Keeping Calm. If you haven't watched the first three episodes of this project, I would highly suggest going, getting brought up to speed. There's a lot of good content on the progress of the car so far. In episode four, we're gonna be focusing on the engine bay, the undercarriage, wheel wells, getting all those cleaned up and restored. So in episode three, the car headed off to paint, went off to Anderson, got a fresh coat of competition orange paint, car is back in the shop, looks great. Everybody's super excited to get started on it. At the end of episode three, we did say we wanted to go with the interior first, slight change of plans. And now we're gonna do the engine bay and the undercarriage. The old tube I've seen a lot over the last 17 years. It definitely needs a good cleaning of probably a lot of parts replaced. So Landon's gonna run through there and get it all cleaned up, address what needs to get changed, and it should look like a brand new motor once it's done. The way we did it, we lifted the car up with a jack, supported the frame rails with jack stands, lowered it down, removed the wheels, removed the upper strut mount plates uh, from the strut towers. That way we could hang the suspension. I'll be honest with you, it'd have been a heck of a lot easier to use our resources and just drop the K-member, the whole transmission, everything out from underneath the car, clean, degrease, whatever. Take it all out of the car, do what you gotta do, and then put it back in there. But again, you know, we wanted to approach it how you were gonna approach it, so I just started taking stuff apart. Intake manifold came off, radiator came out, the cooling fan came out, took the injector harness off, pulled the other harness from the bulkhead within the driver's side fender. And really, the only thing that was left in the engine bay was a intake manifoldless engine, the power steering assembly, and the AC components. That was it, everything else was gone. The cow, the sub-assembly uh, that covers the wiper motor and all that stuff, that was gone. But once I had everything out of the way, it was mainly an organizational thing. You know, getting stuff organized, putting stuff where it needs to go, put things in Ziploc baggies, put tape on things, write stuff down, take pictures obviously before you take something apart, especially if you're doing something this involved. And from there, it was just start going to town, you know, clean and degrease, uh, the strut towers, you name it, we cleaned it. And really what we were chasing, uh, obviously, you know, we had a beautiful paint job. So if we pop the hood on the thing, the engine bay at least has to reflect, you know, all the money we spent to get the car painted. One of the main areas we had to fix regardless what appeared to be some battery acid leaking because it had made its way past the battery tray down into that frame rail. It had it had really ate it up, but we were kind of able to save it. Of course, you know, we used a grinder, some sandpaper, prepped it and removed most of the rust that we could and then came back with a primer sealer and then shot the engine bay, except for the firewall, which, you know, for the most part, you know, still looked pretty good considering the car's age. And for those of you wondering as far as how do we paint the engine bay, we just went down to our local automotive paint shop, gave them the paint coat, and they mixed us up a couple of rattle cans of uh, satin comp orange, which is basically base coat and exactly how Ford painted, you know, the V6 and GTs during the 99 to 04 timeframe. The only cars that had clear coat and engine bays were the 9904 Cobras and the 0304 Mach 1s. So, uh, you know, that's why we didn't do any clear coat or anything like that. We wanted the engine bay to appear like it did, of course, in 2004. Got all the engine bay painted, man, that was that was a journey. Getting every all the little details masked off. You know, you didn't want a bunch of overspray on anything. You know, obviously we just had the car painted, so, you know, we had to back mask all of that. But once we saw some competition orange paint on the strut towers and saw all those ugly markings, you know, just disappear, you know, and, and be hidden under a fresh layer of, of comp orange paint. I'm telling you, man, you, it, it really started to come together. From there, it was restore, refurbish, recondition all of the electrical harnesses. So all of them were thoroughly examined. I cleaned them all. You know, I got all the dirt around the little rubber silicone dust boots on the base of the connectors. You know, cleaned all the connectors th extremely well. Rewrap the harness where we need to rewrap the harness because over time, that vinyl tape or you know, the stuff they use from the factory, you know, it starts to get brown and just looks ugly. Cleaned it, we dressed it, and I'm telling you, I mean, it looked, what, a 16-year-old, 17-year-old harness? It looked in the 95 percentile of how good it looked. I was really proud of that, and really seeing everything come together, all the hours that I've spent thus far on the engine bay, that's your motivator. Seeing the things progress, get finished, that's what keeps you going on something like this. So. Once the, all the harnesses were clean, dressed, properly reconditioned, forgot to mention, you know, I had to repair pigtails. Did some soldering, all that stuff. Some of the connections on the cool on plugs had broke. I believe the crank sensor connector was also broke. Did some pigtail uh, refurbishment as well. So once all the harnesses were done, really it was starting to chase all the brackets. All the brackets that, you know, had that black E-coated finish, they were all blasted and sprayed with the SEM or SIM black easy coat, which that stuff's phenomenal as well. That's available currently on our site, lmr.com. 
real nice heavy coats of the black e coat and man those again you know seeing everything go from old bust to new hotness you know that's kind of the word around here especially when we shoot video of uh, taking off the old and putting on the new i'm telling you man there's something about how much satisfaction there is with this stuff so the engine bay is probably the craziest transformation that i've seen on this car so far uh, we first picked up the car when we drove it back to the shop that was probably one of the saddest things that i saw on the car uh, from just the dust pile up to the shoddy work that was done on it. Uh, it looks like over the past 17 years that this car has been out on the road, nothing's really been replaced on it. Uh, with 180,000 miles, probably should have had something done to it. But with all of the labor and all of the work that went into it, it looks like it was brand new. Landon has a really good attention to detail and I wouldn't want anybody else detailing that engine bay and he did a phenomenal job and that really shows. So the engine bay, since we didn't really do too much and we didn't do a crazy swap or anything like that, cleaning it up and switching out some of the parts really helped make that engine bay. We did the battery terminals back to factory spec, switched out the cold air intake that was on it, made it just a nice factory style black color from SVE. And then they took the time and painted a lot of the engine bay as well, refinished a lot of parts, just back to factory spec. And it looks like a nice OEM plus style engine bay. Aside from all the new components, we reused a, a lot of the takeoff stuff. For example, stock throttle body, uh, cleaned it as well as we could. Tried to find an off the shelf paint that closely matched the, you know, the cast aluminum or bright silver aluminum, whatever you want to call it from the factory. It, it turned out all right, could have been better, sure. You know, there, you could always, you can always chase perfection, but fresh coat of paint, bright silver, you know, putting it back on the intake manifold, seeing everything come together. It was extremely rewarding. As far as hours are concerned, oh God, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I had a lot, a lot, a lot of hours in the engine bay, but it was worth it. We hosed the entire undercarriage of the car down with a cleaner degreaser, you know, let that dwell, let that emulsify all that old road film, oil, transmission fluid, whatever could be on the car. We moved one of our big industrial dumpsters underneath the car. That way any of the fallout or debris, you know, coming down, we didn't have a big old mess on the floor. It was all going in our dumpster and, you know, we could just you know, dump that outside. Started breaking all that down. You know, we used an assortment of brushes, you name it, and then pressure washed all that nasty junk off. And it turned out really well. We knew going into it, you know, we weren't chasing perfection on the undercarriage uh, just because of, well, for one, the car is going to be a drive and two, there was an existing undercoating there that, you know, had already kind of started to fail. You know, we just left all that alone and, uh, you know, continue to do what we needed to do to fix the car. So after we got all the undercarriage sorted, we moved to the rear fender arches. Spent a little time there. We cleaned the area uh, a little more just because we kept applying our cleaner degreaser. The suds were still a little brown. So we hit it a couple times until the suds turned white. Uh, that means, you know, it's not pulling off or removing any more dirt. Uh, once all that was, you know, nice, clean, and fresh, uh, we let it air dry really good. We masked the entire area, the body of the car, uh, any of the suspension or surrounding area that didn't need any undercoating on it. We got all that nice and masked. And then uh, once all that was done, wiped the fender arch with isopropyl alcohol or a prep spray to get it ready for the undercoating. And the undercoating of choice we used was a, the 3M rubberized undercoating, which is something we currently sell here on LMR.com. And I'll be honest with you, at first, I was a little skeptical of it, but I was blown away. I was really surprised with how the 3M rubberized undercoating laid down. It laid down really, really nice. And the rear of that car uh, really came together with just an undercoating. Once all that was done, that was kind of it for the undercarriage, really. When they first installed the front fender liners, I mean, it made a world of a difference. I've never really seen new fender wells on these cars. Uh, and then when they coated the rear wheel wells to match, it just completed the look. You never really see that on these cars. Nobody really spends that much time and that much attention to detail, but once we get wheels, once we get brakes on it, it's all gonna to come together really nicely. So owning a few of these cars before, I've had dreams of pretty crazy swaps before even the Coyote was around, obviously built Texas block or a nice Voitech or Pro Charger under there. But with the advancements in technology and all the Coyote swap stuff coming out, I think I would like to see a Gen 3 in there. This stuff here, you know, again, going old busted, new hotness, seeing the transition, seeing the turnaround on this stuff, that's the motivator, no doubt about it. You know, that's what that's what keeps you trucking to the finish line. It's hard, it's difficult. You know, you wanna give up, you start to see how long stuff takes, but you can't. You gotta keep plugging and know that, you know, when, when you see it and it starts to come together, it, it's all so worth it in the end. Huge thanks to Landon, Hubbard, Scott. They put in so much work onto this engine bay. I couldn't imagine spending that much time, especially on a stock two valve. 
uh, their work really showed. And they did a an awesome job. Well, as you can see, there was a lot of labor hours put into this episode between cleaning the engine bay, replacing parts, getting it all dressed up, power washing the undercarriage, and redoing the wheel wells. It really looks like a brand new car now. Talking to Landon, I think there's about 20 to 25 hours in just the engine bay alone. We had quite a few hours in the undercarriage, the fender arches, uh, obviously the engine bay. And for 180,000 miles, I've never seen a two valve look this good. This part of keeping comp, we're done. We can check that off. Not sure what we're getting into next. Now with the engine bay, undercarriage, and wheel wells all tidied up, it's time to get to the interior. As you saw in the previous episodes, we've already disassembled the interior, got it ready for paint. Now it's time to get ready for episode five. All right, folks, so that's going to wrap it up for episode four, keeping comp, undercarriage, the rear fender arches, fresh undercoating on those arches, and a complete overhaul on the engine bay. Stay tuned for episode five. We're diving in the interior. We'll catch you in the next one. Until then, keep it right here with the real Mustang enthusiast, LMR.com.